You don't think I'm verified? Google me. Google me then. You understand what I'm saying? Like when you can say that you're you're you understand? So this skill is a, is above pretty much all marketing skills besides networking. Okay? Now, we're going to go into a lot of that too. All right? But check this out. It says add overnight ranking skills. Most people tell you that it takes 3 to 6 uh months to rank on the first page of Google. A lot of SEOs tell clients that because they want to keep them on retainer so they have recurring payments because it's hard to get new clients. But that does not mean it's necessarily true, which is why I teach you guys parasite SEO a lot of the times. If you're in the Asset Empire uh, uh, boot camp right now, let them know. That's what we talk about. We talk about parasite SEO. A lot of my students have already got rankings and stuff like that, right? On some of their like parasite pages and everything. All right. So check this out. Add 15 fast monetization methods to your passive income plan. Okay, so we talked about 15, I think y'all was on here, 15 different ways to monetize assets, to monetize uh, websites and stuff besides um, uh, AdSense and stuff. So we did that on a live stream. That's inside the Facebook group, but you're going to see that applied, impl implemented live inside of this money uh, highways ranking bank. For those of you who wonder why I call it money highways, because we consider certain keyway, uh, keywords, uh, certain SEO keywords as like fast on ramps to the freaking highway, the ones that accelerate type situation, not the rural areas where you got stop signs. Those are the low traffic keywords and stuff with the high competition. We want uh, fast traffic Fast, high traffic keywords with low competition. You understand? You know, when you're just coasting on a highway and you're going as fast as you want to go, but you don't see any other cars around. Maybe you just left the club and it's like 3 a.m. I don't go to the club, but I know what it's like back in the day, right? And and you on a highway and you just, once you gauge at the little sec intersection parts like the, the exits, you see ain't no cops on the on-ramp, you hit the gas and you, you fly. But as soon as you get off at your exit, you see all places where you can spend money. You get that late night McFlurry from McDonald's uh, at the 24 hour McDonald's. You go to the gas station, uh, you, you do whatever you need to do, whatever. So it's money on those off ramps. So we treat those keywords, those high traffic keywords, like, like highways, like they're, they speed up our monetization. You understand? So that's what Money Highways is about. It's not about slow growth and all of that. It's not about uh, the typical SEO crap where if we care about your dot coms and all of that stuff. It's about using whatever you have to use. Parasites, uh, press release, videos, all different types of uh, uh, platforms and everything that index extremely fast and already come with authority that you can leverage to get your fast first page rankings. That's what it's about. So what's included in the Money Highways Ranking Bank course, this is what we're talking about today. The uh, perfect AI SEO game plan. No extra costs. As you guys know, we're talking about it today. It's free and all of that. I'm going to probably plug it into, uh, just go ahead and join the waiting list and you'll automatically get that email to you for free. Um, okay. Then tomorrow we'll probably talk about using SEO to buy businesses with no money out of pocket. So you're like, what? How can you possibly do that? Well, there's a lot of businesses that are selling. All right. You can go to some of these uh, uh, buybiz.com or I'll show you some of the sites and the buy biz sale and, and all of those different sites and everything. I know you guys heard of them before, but check this out. A lot of them are selling because they're not selling. If you get what I mean, they can't get customers. They can't get clients and stuff. But if they had the option, they would stay in freaking business. Well, guess what? If we go ahead of time and position ourselves in Google for the niches locally that they are in, and we start generating calls and we approach them, but this will only work for those businesses that actually want to stay in business, but they're selling due to emergencies. So we hit them with the, um, if you had a steady stream of new uh, clients, patients, customers, or whatever coming through the door or whatever, would you still be selling? 
oh, no, nah, man, if I can figure this thing out or whatever, I don't really want to sell my baby. I don't want to sell my baby. OK, well, fine. We are already positioned. We already dominate over here in in Sherman Oaks, California for a limousine service. We're already getting calls. We're already getting requests for bookings. All we have to do is plug in your number, your phone number, your contact information and everything, and we'll transfer those customers or those clients to you. And you'll be able to like fill up your fleet. Your entire, none of your limousines will be sitting. So you can go literally oh, you know, within a week's time from from in the red to the green, Mr. Limousine owner. Oh, that sounds good. All right, well, let's test it out then. So we get our tracking number and we forward the calls to them. Calls come in, they start getting bookings. Twelve hundred dollars for for a prom. Uh, 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 three thousand dollars for a funeral. Um, uh, what what do you call it? The wedding. There's an eight hour uh, situation. So we we equate that and everything like that. So. What we do is then become the third leg of that business. What do I mean like that? Pause. <laughs> so we, upon agreement, require them to switch to our payment processors. So we're going to get 50 percent of the transaction in any transaction fees that come in through their website. And they come in in person when somebody swipe a credit card with their drivers or call in and make a payment or something like that. We're going to get. 50% of each transaction fee. And I'm going to show you guys that inside the money, money uh, highways course. On top of that, their thank you pages, all of their thank you pages, we're going to uh, require them to have our AdSense placed on their thank you pages. So this is all leverage. Why? Because they were getting traffic before they even met us anyway. So we're going to automatically be monetized. And on top of that, we're going to drop service them. Plus, we're going to get profit share. We're going to have profit share. You understand? So this is how we'll start to own the business. We'll start to buy out our piece of the business, right? And they do all of the fulfillment and the work. We don't have to get no vehicles or no, no drivers or deal with staff or anything like that. But we have a whole stake in the company just because we know how to bring them back from the dead using SEO. Ooh -wee! Okay. So now, day after that, we'll talk about deploying brand jacking campaigns for faster rankings and easy to convert leads. If you guys have been on this channel anytime, then you know I love brand jacking. This is where you position yourself, you associate yourself with a, a, um, a powerful, popular uh, um, brand that is in the industry that you want to be in. Is how, uh, uh, what is it, Costco, connects, I think it's now Sam's Club connects to Walmart. The uh, Sam's Club siphons off credibility and authority and customers automatically just by being attached and associated with Walmart. When you see a regular person inside of a picture, they take a picture with a rock. Now you're curious about that regular person. And if they do that enough times with enough celebrities, you start thinking they're a celebrity. You start researching them. And then when you start researching them, though, that creates keywords. That creates keywords. When you start searching stuff, you create, the, the people create the keywords. So now they become this powerful entity, even though they were nobody at first. So that's the same thing you can do with your rankings. Brand jacking allows you to catapult yourself uh, uh, your brand recognition, your authority, and all of that stuff way past people that starting from the bottom. Now we hit starting from the bottom. Shut up. Okay. So you get to like catapult yourself, like just woo, on ramp that stuff. You understand? So I love brand jack. And another thing, if a person searches for a brand by name, they've already been a customer or they've been referred by somebody else that's a customer, which makes them the warmest or the hottest of leads ever. That means they're already ready to buy. Hurry up and buy it. You understand? They're already ready. They're already ready. Okay. Uh, Shizzy says, does leveraging mean increasing uh, reasons person to take an action? Uh, no, leveraging just means <laughs> uh, using something else as a stair step, pretty much. Uh, using someone else's someone else's time, efforts, money, or something for your benefit. 
so that you don't have to start from scratch. That's pretty much what leverage is. You can leverage money. You can leverage somebody else's credit. You can leverage somebody else's authority. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why people uh, will like pay for a feature or an interview with a, a like that's how they break in new artists. So they'll go and get Lil Wayne to feature on this brand new artist track. They drop their first single. And since Lil Wayne is on it, you're going to be like, oh, this dude can't be a bum if, if Wayne is on it. So let me give him a shot. And then for his second single, he got, you know, a verse from Ross or Jay. And you're like, oh, this dude, he must got cake or he, he just legitimate. They see something in him. Let me give him a shot and get his album or stream, whatever y'all do now. Right. So that's that's brand jacking. Right associating yourself with something bigger so you can siphon off the power for yourself. Woo -wee! I told y'all the gloves is coming off, babe. Let's do this bare knuckle. You understand? All right. So <laughs> next is leverage AI SEO content to eliminate VAs and scale rankings in weeks. So we want to be as lean as possible. This is not the 17... 1800s, early 1900s, where we need a million staff. With the, with the implementation of AI properly, um, you can have one or two VAs instead of having a legion of staff now. And uh, these VAs would just be supervisors to make sure the machine doesn't break down. And if the machine does break down, they will just go in there, fix it and press start again. The same way these warehouses and these factories are doing, they're firing all of the humans, putting robots in there, and then they'll hire one human just to like go in there and make sure like if something shuts down or stops uh, running, they just go back in there and press play again. That's what you want your business be on. That's as close as close to passive as you're going to get. Don't think you're going to have a complete AI or automated business. That's a lie. You want to have some things working for you and then someone working for you. That's how you build a sound business and you don't go out of business. All right. So we're going to leverage AI SEO content to eliminate VAs and scale rankings in weeks. So how are we gonna scale rankings in weeks, okay? Ethical programmatic SEO and duplicate content. Ethical, ethical. We're not going and taking someone else's content off of their sites and then pasting it on ours and trying to rank. That's when it's unethical. That's when it's illegal. That's when you get penalized. But Ethical duplicate content is when content works well on one of your pages that you own on your site and you simply say, hmm, well, I'll just clone that page out in a different city or a different location because if it worked in Los Angeles, I know it will work in St. Louis. Why create something whole brand new and experiment and possibly have weak on page SEO and not get the rankings in St. Louis if it worked in Los Angeles? You understand? So a lot of people are afraid of duplicate content penalties, but they don't know nothing. Not trying to offend, but they don't know anything. They just listen to what SEOs on all these channels, they put fear into them so that you can't grow. Because if you knew that you can clone out your own content with no penalties, you'll be able to churn out articles. Now, I'm not telling you to do 40, 50, 60 uh, articles and make them live the same day or anything like that. Now, Watch this. So since there has been this fluctuation of people using ChatGPT, Jasper, and all of these article writing AI situations, these people aren't even having these articles written properly. So Google is de-indexing a lot of these pages, but that's because they're not doing it right. Also, Google knows. Google knows there's no way that a man is making a hundred articles a day, especially if you're doing them like like uh, different articles or something like that or whatever. They know that got to be some type of AI or something like that. So they'll let you rank for a couple minutes and then they'll de-index you. So what you want to do, guys, here's a free tip for those of you who do uh, use AI article writers and all of that stuff. Do not do it in increments. Don't do it in increments. Don't upload 10 articles and then upload 40 articles. When I say upload, I'm talking about like submitting them in uh, the search console for indexing. Don't do it like that because it's like 40 articles 
20 articles, 100 articles, that stuff don't look real. It don't look natural at all. OK, so it'll it'll let you be indexed for a minute and then your pages will disappear. I actually am a victim of that. Right. Being honest. So I get it. I told you all I don't experiment on y'all like I test this stuff out and then I'll show you. OK, so what you want to do. I'm not telling you not to clone out a million pages like Wikipedia. You definitely want to do that, right? But do it before you submit your site. See, that's the key. That's the magic. Yes, I told you I was going to let you know. And it's all free, baby. You understand? So you create your 100, 200, 300, 400 articles. And then you submit your site to be indexed. Then Google can't say, oh, this is unnatural. They just sat here and... Uh, release 40 articles today and then 100 yesterday uh, or the day before and all of that. They can't say that because you didn't submit the site until you had a thousand articles on it already. So that's how you get around all of that, guys. You just build out your pages, clone out your pages as many as you want to without trying to submit for de-index, I mean, for indexing. Then you go and get all your analytics and, and all of that stuff set up for your site. Okay, so that's how you avoid that. See, there you go. All right, so next, what's going to be in the money? Highways. Rank your bank SEO course. I am proud to introduce you guys to what I call the bilingual takeover. Okay, I've been doing this for years before. Like, remember, if you go on my channel, you can open it up in another window. You'll see when it's to go to about. And you'll see that this channel been around since 2015. I know a lot of you guys have just found me through all this AI situation stuff or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I ain't no new Jack. Ain't nobody going to Wesley Snipes me. Less than likely. Move back. No, I'm just playing. But <laughs> I ain't new at this. So I've been doing foreign SEO forever. And guess what? SEO, Google is still behind on updates in all of these different languages other than English. So we have a lot of competition. For those of you who think that that is a Google sandbox and all of that stuff, try out, do some experiments with foreign SEO and you'll see there's no such thing as a freaking uh, 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 Google sandbox. Even on here, if you go back a couple of live streams, I've shown y'all me ranking what in hours or the next day uh, for some foreign SEO terms on a brand new domain, just to prove there's no Google sandbox. If you if your site isn't showing up, you either got garbage content or you think you did good keyword research, but it's really not that good. So you think, man, this is low competition. That's because you're using them tools. You're using those stupid SEO tools. No offense. You know, I, I might introduce y'all to a couple, but they won't be to gauge SEO uh, uh, traffic. If I introduce you guys to some tools, it won't be, ooh, this one is saying that it get this amount of searches and the competition is this low. No, we have different ways of gauging competition and search traffic and all of that that comes straight from the source. Google will let you know that stuff. You understand? And who knows more than Google when it comes to Google? So forget them dang on tools. So when y'all doing this keyword research for traffic and competition, you might be getting the wrong information, especially if you think you're caught up in some sandbox. I've shown y'all time after time is no sandbox. Go and watch some of the other live streams. I put up a, a page in, in, on a brand new parasite and it'll be uh, on the first page of Google or page two or three at least by the next morning. Where the sandbox at? Don't let these people fear monger y'all. Okay, so we're going to be ranking in multiple languages. Why? Because people, customers and clients are from all different shades and races. They got money too, especially if they come to America. If they don't know English, what they're going to search in? They're going to search Google in their language. So it's all different streams of incomes you guys can be uh, uh, um, uh, taking advantage of. If you don't just sit there and think about America all day, we ain't, uh, uh, well, I say we, I ain't in America no more, but <laughs> y'all ain't the only ones that matter. There's people that come and migrate to America and there's other countries that have Google, Italy, I, pretty much all of them have Google and people search for stuff over there. And some of those websites on the first page of Google are from 2010. I'm not lying to you. 2010, 2007, 2012. I've shown y'all in other videos. Now you're telling me with your updated knowledge, 
even as a beginner, you don't think you can beat a 2007 website where the images are static and it might just have a couple words and the background is gray and and it says Sega and Nintendo on the side. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> is that's the type of stuff you want to go after? Something with high traffic, but the competition is chuckable. It's hilarious. That's what you want. Okay, so. Next, we'll be conquering the Google SERPs with masterful Parasite SEO. And that's what I was talking about. Uh, ranking your Weeblies, ranking your Wixes, ranking your uh, press releases, ranking your Twitter posts, ranking your uh, Pinterest pins, ranking your Instagram posts. You understand? Ranking your Parasites, your Facebook groups. Why? Because these platforms already have trust and authority with Google. They have millions of pages already indexed. So how long do you think it's going to take for your page to index when you make a profile or a group? Exactly. It's going to index instantly, within hours probably, at least, right? And if you know how to do the proper off-page and on-page SEO, because you can do on-page SEO on your profiles and in your groups. A lot of people don't get that, but that's because we think of these parasites. We think of Facebook. We think of uh, Instagram and all of these other platforms as some weird different type of entity just because it's named a social network. But a social network at its core is still a web site. And guess what? The content on your profile pages still has to get indexed in Google. So if you're optimized properly on your social medias and all of that stuff, you can do all page SEO to them too. And guess what? It's going to be more powerful and beneficial than if you do it to your own little dot com. Your dot com is brand new. It has no trust with Google. That is the last thing I teach people to rank. If you were in my Asset Empire Bootcamp or in the Godfather Drop Service or any of my, my SEO, any programs that I had SEO in, you know that, that that's pretty much the last thing I tell you to go try to rank. Because guess what? A lot of this stuff you can get penalties for on your freaking actual domain. So we juice up all of these parasites. We turn them into freaking X-Men mutants. And then they all turn around and point their powers at your actual money site. Ooh -wee! That way you ain't got to buy none of these bummy, fake, uh, 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 penalty-bringing PBNs from none of these money-grubbing uh, wannabe affiliate SEOs. OK, so you don't want to get your site jacked up after you created all this content. So we create our own powerful entities to link back from. And guess what? Majority of this stuff is free to do. So Parasite SEO, we're going to master that. OK, so next right here, guys. What's up? OK, so uh, DeWine Hale said, how do we join the wait list? If you look in the pin, the pin chat, look up at the top, the pin chat. Uh, yeah, I put it in there. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. I put it. I put it in there. This is the the way it's right here. Oh dang! Never mind. It just did all of that. <laughs> what? No. Okay. Let me put it in the pen in the in the chat again. But it's the pen comment, y'all. If you're trying to join, I mean, I would strongly advise for you to join the waiting list. Uh, but I, I I'm not being salesy on here because this is where you come to be fed and free for free. <laughs> Okay, so check this out. A lot of you guys have seen uh, what Google's plan is with AI and all of this extra stuff, and you're shaking in your freaking boots, but check this out. You don't have to be afraid if you know how to master a few things that already take up a lot of the searches. So let's come over to Google real quick, and we're going to type in uh, how to tie a tie. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. What is this feature snippet? Look how much space this takes up and pushes the freaking websites down. Okay. Oh, snap. The image on a Google for this search term, they got crazy search volume. Oh, snap. Do you see a FAQ or related searches section on the first page of Google? So <laughs> my point is everybody's so afraid that Google's uh, what is it called SGE, Google's new 
uh, SGE, their little AI chat situation that's going to take the first page of Google for a lot of search terms. They're like, oh, ain't nobody going to be going to my websites anymore. That's retarded. Google makes a lot of money from people going to your website off of their display ads. That's a huge income for them. That's a huge chunk, a, like a gigantic, gargantuan chunk, if I could use that word. Check this out, though. This is called a feature snippet. They have always been around. I remember when we're panic, people were panicking when feature snippets first came out, like, yo, look at my site all the way down here. I'm not going to get no traffic. Well, check this out. Do you know where you are? You in the jungle, baby. All right. <laughs> you have to adapt. So if feature snippets take up a lot of stuff, well, figure out get the feature snippets section then. Because guess what? In a feature snippet, it still has a link to your website. Just like in that Google SGE demonstration, when they showed the little chat situation, right up under it were links to websites that they got the freaking information from. So you're still going to be able to get uh, 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 searches. On top of that, as you can see, they're putting a lot of video content up here. This is why I'm trying to get you guys to detach from your mindset of, oh, but my my website, my dot com. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yo, the point is you getting on the first page of Google, capturing those leads and those customers. I don't care what platform you use to do it. As long as your brand is dominating Google, you're in the right freaking place then. They can always see your brand and videos and all these other advertisements and all of that. But you need to be on the first page of Google, preferably at the top. So as you can see, video content is definitely going to start taking over. So what you do? Create freaking video content. You don't have to be the one on camera, but it needs to be done. What's my motto? Someone or something needs to do it. It don't have to be you, but someone or something. That's how you're going to survive, baby. All right. And don't forget, Google ain't the only search engine. I mean, it's the most dominant one right now, but it's not the only one. Plus, if you're Anyway, we'll talk about that stuff later. So we're going to master feature snippets. We're going to master FAQ sections. We're going to master the people also ask. And this is how we're going to combat Google Bards, uh, AI, and, and S Google SGE, and all of these things that people are considering the SEO Armageddon. I've been around. I feel like a freaking eternal vampire from that show, the originals or something. I've been around through all of these tragedies. It used to be a 10 pack. The Google snack pack used to be 10 businesses. I don't know how old a lot of y'all are, but uh, Bernard, let them know. When you used to search Google, it used to have 10 businesses showing and the websites was all the way up under them. But people were still getting traffic to their websites. And then it turned into a seven pack. Come on, let me know, man. Tell me y'all remember this stuff. So my point is don't let people fear monger you. Then it turned into a three pack. So Google is going to do, my point is Google is going to optimize and do whatever they have to do to please the website owners. Even though they don't like us, they don't like SEOs, it's still regular businesses with websites. They can't make them suffer just because they hate us. So we're going to get traffic regardless. So if you master snippets, you master the FAQ, you master the people also ask, you're going to show up in these new AI, AI situations. You'll be the site that they feature inside that little chat thing. How about that? What you scared of? If you got bummy content, then you probably need to be wiped out anyway. So this is why we want to become greater. We want to master the skills of creating quality content. That's why when I show you guys on page SEO, we go super in depth and we like pull out our weaponry from our arsenal. And we like destroy everybody else on the first page of Google when it comes to on-page SEO. That way, if we do need some type of off-page SEO backlinks, et cetera, and all of that, I mean, we only need a tiny bit because our on-page SEO is like crazy. We got, we got our freaking multiple FAQ sections. We have our infographics that's just really explaining everything. Our images are, are expressing what the, the keyword or the topic of the page is. Our videos are expressing what the keyword uh, uh, or the topic is. Uh, our freaking uh, bar graphs, pie charts, uh, price and comparison tables, all of that stuff. You understand? Our, our outbound links, 
to authority, uh, uh, other authorities and stuff. All of that ex is expressing what the topic is so that when the user comes to the website, the website visitor comes there, they don't bounce off. They can find what they're looking for. Give us some good dwell time. Be satisfied. And those are going to send some good signals to Google. And Google is going to say, oh, hell yeah. Let's keep this one ranked up here. OK, so then you want to experiment, guys, because this is how you find out new revelations. God will put these revelations in front of you, but you can't be scared, though. OK, so generating strategic keyword experiments to prove there's no sandbox. That's where I was talking about ranking in different languages on purpose just to prove there's no Google sandbox. Uh, that's why I was talking about taking keywords and making them so, so like, like uh, uh, specific that like the competition is extremely low. Remember what I told you guys. Google is a game of supply and demand. This is a genie lamp. This search box is a genie lamp, okay? People come to this genie lamp to make wishes. I wish you, Google, I wish you would tell me how to tie a tie, wins or not. And Google's job as that genie is to grant this request. So if you in this video or this website can answer this question the best, it is supply and demand. Why would Google, who wants to be the greatest search engine of all time, hold back a great answer from the people that's rubbing that genie lamp? How much sense does that make? That's why I don't believe in a sandbox. It don't make no sense. You just need to focus on finding keywords that don't have supply. Keywords that have demand, like people want to know the answer to them. But when you go and search them, no, there's no supply. That's why when I show you guys stuff like this, hold on, we'll go to Google Translate. Okay. We'll open up another browser too. Then we're going to type in, uh, hey, pay attention, y'all. This is where the money is. We're going to type in homes for sale in uh, Houston, Texas. Watch this. Watch this, baby. We come back over here to Google. Now we're going to pop that in there. Pop that cannon. Pop that cannon. Pop that cannon. That's that Cassidy back in the day. You understand? Y'all too young. But check this out. Just in case you didn't think, just in case you are new to this channel, yes, people are here from other countries and they ain't got time to learn English before they figure out where they want to live. But they got money. Okay? So we click on this one right here. Now, we're going to use not a tool, but we're going to use uh, 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 the golden keyword ratio discovered by Doug Cunnington. Show some love. You understand what I'm saying? Let me show you something. All right. Watch this. This is going to show us how many pages are created with this title in the page, meaning they're intentionally trying to rank for this keyword specifically. Bop, zip, zero. But let's type that in English. What is this? How do we flip this around? Uh, nope, that's not what I want. Let me take the Spanish version real quick. And then we're going to put it in here. Houses for sale in Houston from owner to owner. Uh, it's supposed to be FBO. That's the actual keyword in English. But since it's being translated in Spanish, it's going to be completely different. But let's just try out like this. Okay, so now owner... Owner of financing, I forgot what it's called. Uh, let me just take this off real quick. Yeah, there you go. Houses for sale by owner in Houston. This is the English version of that exact keyword. First of all, I want you to notice it is a whole crap load of supply for the demand. A lot of these websites are trying to rank for this exact term. So we'll go ahead and we'll put that in there. Come on. Google on robot or am I? No, I'm just playing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's long tail, so it's three, but that still ain't better than zero. But so it's going to be way more competition because of all of these big boys on the first page of Google. Look at these. They got so much authority. But let me show you what is ranking for this in Spanish. 
Let's go back a little bit. Okay. We're going to take that off like a stripper. And then, oh, 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 how do I tell you guys to look for what are the signals if the first page of Google is weak? Well, first of all, you want to find twins or duplicates or copies. Okay. The same type of website back to back. We got two Facebooks. First of all, a Facebook is, I told y'all, <laughs> but Facebooks don't normally rank first on the first page of Google. Why is Google doing that? Because it's not that much demand for this. I mean, it's not that much supply for this keyword. So they have to suggest the closest to it. They got to like, they have to like to be a good search engine. They got to give you what is the closest to it. So these are like, this was the closest. All right. So check this out. Look, you got Facebooks back to back ranking at the top. That's all you got to compete with Facebooks. And then the Zillow, you're like, oh, well, that's a high, high authority, you know, website in real estate. Yes, it is. But check this out. Google, uh, uh, Zillow does not have the demand. I mean, they don't have the supply. This page is not in Spanish. It's in English. They didn't optimize for this. Whoop, that's a weakness right there. That is a weakness, baby. Okay. So you, we're going to be taking advantage of people's pig-headedness to only care about English because they're Americans. We're going to take advantage of that. And guess what? When, when Spanish-speaking millionaires come to America and search for homes for sale and they got them dollares, them, them uh, <laughs> you understand, like the Nero's up in this mug, we're going to show up for that stuff. And we're going to be able to help sell the $4 million houses that everybody else is ignoring because they don't, they don't. And guess what? You don't have to know, know how to speak Spanish. ChatGBT knows how to speak Spanish. Google Translate knows how to speak Spanish. Or you can partner with a bilingual realtor that knows how to speak Spanish. Boom. So as you can see, is no competition. None of these people have created exact match pages for this. Uh. Ain't that beautiful? Okay. So that's the type of stuff that's going to, we're going to be demonstrating inside the Money Highways Ranking Bank SEO course, proving we're going to be doing those type of experiments. You guys yourselves that are going to be in there are going to be experiencing for the first time, some of you, first day and first week rankings on the first page of Google. You're going to be like, yo, all this time, I thought that it's going to take a couple months or, or half a year to rank on the first page of Google. I'm sitting here ordering all of these expensive backlinks and people telling me these the right keywords. No, they're not the right keywords if you think it's a Google sandbox. That's just letting me know that you ain't using the right keywords if you believe in a sandbox. So check this out. Then we're going to inject Wikipedia interlinking strategy for instant domain authority. So remember when I was saying at the beginning of this, now, Wikipedia has uh, millions of pages. So we want to clone out pages. We want to churn out pages. But just in case people are right about this, uh, um, um, this velocity penalty of uh, indexing too many pages at one time and, and posting all of these blog posts and all of this extra stuff on Google and everything, we want to churn out these pages. We want to master our silos for topical authority, right? You're gonna learn about these beautiful Spider-Man silos that we do, and that's gonna help you get instant domain authority. It's gonna increase, increase you. Kind of like those instant credit hacks, uh, like the people that do credit repair, they'll teach you about those, and uh, you'll, you'll bump up like 100 points on your credit score in a couple days and all of that stuff. This is kind of like that, but it's for SEO. Okay. So now, once again, we're moving to the age of AI, even though Google has already been in AI forever, like people don't be paying attention, but we're moving deeper into the age of AI, right? Uh, <laughs> so we want to optimize for that. One of the ways that people search on Google it's just like this. If I'm driving and I got a headset in or I need directions, this is why if you're in any of, in any of my courses, you'll notice that on all the pages, if it's some type of location type situation, I'm always telling you, always urging you to embed multiple location 
Google Maps on your pages. Why? So that it can help you when it comes to voice search. If I'm in a car and I can't sit here and be looking at the uh, at Google all day or be writing stuff down or all of that, and I'm like, yo, uh, give me the directions from here to the Science Center in St. Louis. All right. And then Google pop pulls up the first one and I only got a second and I can click on whatever it is right there or whatever. Boom. I'm one of the first search results for voice search. We're going to optimize for Google, Alexa, Siri, and some of these other ones, uh, Car Cardona and, and all of these. We're going to optimize for voice search. Yeah, we got to move into the fly right into the future. OK, so. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to locate keywords that have more traffic than a highway, but little to no competition. That's what Money Highways is all about. We're going to be extremely strategic. A lot of people think that low competition keywords have to be low traffic keywords, but there are keywords. There are some amongst us with powers undiscovered. No, <laughs> there are keywords that a lot of people uh, a, a lot of SEOs pass up because they have millions of searches or hundreds of thousands of searches because they're brands. So they just assume, oh man, that brand has a high domain authority. And, and you know, that's why I don't pay attention to these freaking tools, man. You understand? Like, dude, especially when you're doing it in different languages, you'll see a website with lower domain ranking or authority according to the tool ranking higher than these high domain authority sites. What matters is the uh, intent of the page itself. If you can answer that question that a person searches for in Google better than anybody else on there, Google is not going to deprive that website visitor of your site just because your domain ain't popping. That don't make no sense, y'all. Don't let these people scare you, fear monger you into buying a million freaking tools and you still ain't ranking on the first page of SEO when you use them all. So locating keywords that have more traffic than a highway, but little to no competition. So for example, in our Money Highways uh, SEO ranking bank course, we're going to be ranking for different landmarks, like you know uh, the Empire State Building. We'll rank for uh, the, the Grand Canyon and stuff. Why? How could you monetize that? First of all, it gets hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of searches per month. But then when you go and look on the first page of Google, it's only the city, like the government sites ranking on the first page of Google for that. Because a, a couple of reasons. Most SEOs don't know how to monetize other than ads for a keyword like Grand Canyon. But you have to think, if I'm going to the Grand Canyon, it's either a road trip or it's a flight. If I'm taking a road trip or a flight, there are things I'm going to need. It's going to be places I'm going to have to sleep, uh, places I'm going to have to eat, equipment I might need, camera stuff, backpacks, water, all of that stuff, y'all. People don't think. That's why. In the money, highways, rank and bank. It's called, you hear the rank and bank part, don't you? The bank part, okay? So this is why these keywords are open because SEOs only think about Okay, once I rank, how can I rent the, out that entity? Or how can I get a client to pay me up front on retainer or something like that? So when you find keywords like Raging Rivers Water Park, an SEO's mind goes blank. Even though it got hundreds of thousands of searches per month, their mind goes blank. They're like, okay, I don't want to have to just get into the AdSense game. That ain't going to make me rich enough. How how would I be able to like monetize raging ranking for Raging Rivers Water Park? Do predict the day of the person that's going to be taking their family to Raging Rivers Water Park. What are some other things they might want to do on that day? What are some things they're going to need to enjoy themselves the most? And then you find affiliate programs for all of that stuff. So when they join your list, for more info on best ways to get the, the, the most enjoyment out of visiting the Grand Canyon, now your list can automatically follow up with all of these Grand Canyon related CPA and affiliate offers. And now you have harnessed hundreds of thousands of searches that everybody else was ignoring. Man, dude, 
It's crazy. Been on here since 2015 and still got more to show. <sighs> I love this, man. I love this. All right. If you loving it too, put a hashtag yes law it in the chat. Make sure y'all share that in my Martin Lawrence voice. Share this. Open up Facebook. Find any entrepreneurial type groups and stuff and share this so that any other business owners, anybody, website owners, business owners, local, entrepreneurial, online, whatever, they're going to need to know this. Well, I don't, I don't like to use the need. This is super beneficial for any business owner to know, to be able to harness the power of like super high intent traffic. Okay. All right. So now starting tomorrow, I'm going to be giving a discount to those of you who participate in helping me get the word out for the money highways ranking bank course. Am I trying to turn you into somebody that's going to be going and doing all this extra? No. But since I don't sit and talk about ChatGPT that much anymore, uh, Google, not Google, YouTube doesn't really suggest me anymore. So we want this to be as impactful, impact as many businesses and uh, entrepreneurs' businesses as possible on June 17th. So you guys, when you show up here, if you're on a computer, it would help for you to just go like this and live stream it and they'll find the channel. Other business owners will find the channel. You just live stream it, not live stream it to your house or something, but to, to your whatever, your, uh, your um, I don't know, your Instagram followers. You go on TikTok and just go live and, and whatever. I don't know, whatever. But those of you who do that and help out will get a super discount on this mug and get discounts on our future stuff. Like I got a mastermind coming up. I'm trying to decide if we want to do it in Mexico or if we want to do it here in Panama. Let me know in the chat if you want Mexico or if you will pop up to Panama. All right. I know a lot of people want to go to Thailand. Uh, if you want to be on the 20 hour flight, then yeah, whatever. <laughs> but Mexico is awesome. I still haven't been to Belize yet. So, so far, I've only been to Mexico and Panama. These are my only two outside of United States countries so far. So, which one y'all want to do the mastermind in? Let me know. Okay. All right. So, ranking high and fast without PBNs and traditional backlinks. So, a lot of 2015 to 2018 was spent with everybody spending thousands of dollars on what is called a private blog network are for short PBNs, right? What that is, it is a, a, a network or a syndication of expired domains that you go out and buy. You spend thousands of dollars on these expired domains because they already had trust and authority and had a lot of ranking pages on the first page of Google. So a lot of people were doing that trying to revive these, get the rankings back, and then they'll link back to their money site from it. But then Google started figuring it out because it doesn't make sense for a, a great outdoors fisherman.com to be ranking to a how to make money online website. So it didn't make no freaking sense. So they started penalizing you for getting these PBNs. So we got smarter and we started creating social PBNs. And that's similar to what I'm talking about up here when I was talking about uh, juicing up your parasite uh, uh, SEO, all right? But yeah, we started creating these kind of like social PBNs, juicing up our social networks and stuff, because guess what? It is extreme. I mean, I mean, like it's natural. It's completely harmless and natural in Google's eyes to be linking back to your site from a social media site. If you're a business, they expect you to be getting the word out on social media. Actually, it makes you look more legitimate, right? Oh, they're in business. You know, they, they had the grand opening, so they did a press release. Oh, they're in business. They had the grand opening, so they went and got directory links because they're a local business. Oh, they, uh, they are in business. They're trying to get the word out, so they got Facebook, Instagrams, and LinkedIn's. So that's all natural. So what you do, since you know that Google thinks those are all natural, you juice up those all natural entities. Then you link back if you need to. Okay. So we're going to delete the traditional PBMs and the traditional backlinks. And what I mean by that is we'll turn our own site in such, into such an authority, like what Wikipedia did. 
And then we'll link back the pages that we want to rank from other pages that are already ranking on our own freaking website. People don't, don't think the authority comes from the rankings, right? The trust from Google. So if you already got pages on your own site that Google trusts, how come you got a link back from somebody else's site to your page? Why don't you just link back from your own uh, site pages, high ranking pages to that page that you want to rank now? That's way more natural and beneficial to share that link juice throughout the site. So you don't need external backlinks. You don't need them. I'm never going to tell you guys you need something. Some things will be beneficial that I recommend to you, but I'm not going to feed you that need crap that a lot of people try to do. Right. OK, so now then we'll go into an in-depth SEO psychology breakdown behind why people search certain keywords then buy. So a lot of people, like I said, these people that think it's a Google sandbox, they think they're doing low, uh, good keyword research. And so ooh, I found the low competition keyword. I know I could rank for this one. And then a website don't show up forever. We're going to find premeditated keywords. If that's a term, I don't know. <laughs> premeditated keywords. For example, I'll give you an example just off the top of the dome. If I'm about to buy a new car, let's say I already know what type of car it is that I'm interested in, but I don't want a gas guzzler or I don't want a car that's going to send me to the gas station every five freaking minutes. So I'll type in this and we'll put, all right, look at this. I got Boeing and stuff. We'll do BM, BMW X5 fuel capacity. Now, let me show you how low, like, look, how garbage, no offense. Okay, so we got Edmonds on here twice on the first page of Google. So is it Edmonds? We got that. They got the feature snippet. That's very good. And then there's the FAQ section right here too, okay? But look at this. You got Santa Fe BMW uh, right there. And you got Santa Fe BMW right there again. And this one is just one of those that's just like for all of these keywords or whatever is always on the first page of Google. So we're going to check and see if we can even beat the one that's ranking so high. Let Their content, since they're ranking so high, their content just got to be like immaculate. Okay, specular. Okay, so we got this. Got the little table uh, area. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not syndicated. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, do y'all see that? Now we're going to check out number two. And uh, yeah, now I don't know about you. I mean, this doesn't look like something difficult to beat as far as on page SEO, at least. I mean, let me know what y'all think in the chat. Do you, do, you, do you have confidence that you can beat a site like this when it comes to SEO? I mean, this is really naked websites. The websites are very naked. And this is another one where, uh, um, you know, the keyword golden ratio sometimes when apply to these because it's so many of these car sites, but they're still not optimized properly for that. And as you can see, this one only has one search result. So this is what I'm talking about, about a premeditated keyword research campaign. If I am thinking about buying this car or a car similar, then I this is something I might search. So we'll look for stuff. We'll look for keywords like this. Auto start, stop, adaptive cruise control, some of the features, the stuff that we are um, excited about the car about, right? Is it all wheel drive? Is it and all of that extra stuff, right? Look at this, okay? will rank for that type of stuff. It's premeditated. So it's going to have good search volume, but there's no competition because everybody else is going to be trying to rank for this one. Tell me line. Everybody's going to be trying to rank for that one. The for sale. This is a buyer intent keyword. So is the informational keywords. A buyer, only a buyer would be searching for the informational keywords too. So you want to catch them right before they make the decision so that you don't have to compete with all of the other people. 
That's how you do keyword research. Okay, let's get back over here. Then we're going to have some fun. I'm going to reveal to y'all a couple of people that I have been fortunate to work with. And then I'm going to show you how to work with people on those same levels. We don't do the idolatry thing over here. It's still just regular people, for real, in my opinion. But these people have uh, authority that you can siphon off, credibility that you can gain by working with them, having your name attached to them. And then the scripture tells you that you're supposed to build a good name, good reputation. Okay. So how to attract celebrity status, SEO projects. I didn't say clients. I don't believe in getting clients, y'all. Get out of the slave mentality of getting clients. That's just another job. Okay. So you get partners. You get partners and projects, meaning I'm not just getting no freaking container payments. I want a piece of everything. Okay. And that's not greedy. You're doing the work. All right. So check this out. Access to weekly interviews with SEO, successful SEOs and more. We don't need to go too in depth with that. You guys can pretty much guess. Uh, then, well, this ain't parts that we need to even talk about right now. Yeah. Students receive cash back for every assignment successfully completed. I'm not a money hungry Quarter type situation. I'm actually one of the people that actually make money from the assets that they build. So I don't need to uh, uh, rinse and drain you guys of your pockets. So for every assignment that is successfully completed, because I don't like lazy people and I don't like nobody getting inside my programs, not doing the work and then blaming it on me. Like, oh man, I got in there and it didn't work, but then they didn't do nothing. So this is a way to incentivize the students to work, to actually do the assignments, because guess what? This stuff is proven. The scripture says, let all your ways be established. That means proven. I don't experiment on my students. All right. So if you don't have results and you've came across me before, it's because you didn't do it. No offense. So you have to implement the way that I teach you. I don't know everything, but the things that I teach you I have experience with. Okay. So cash back for every assignment. And then if they don't receive results first week, no excuses. We'll grant you 50% off all other courses, mastermind, et cetera, for life. Now, anyway, forget all of that. Now let's get back over here. So this is where the upgraded version of the, uh, um, what do you call it? The perfect AI SEO game plan, formerly known as the perfect SEO game plan. Okay. So this is where it is now. And I downloaded it after I put it together. And um, yeah, is just go to the chat and join that waiting list. I guess I should put it back in there again since some new of you, some some of you guys are new on here. All right, so it launches June 17th. Just make sure you set a reminder, an alarm, or Something like that. What's up, Patty Pacifico? Hey, she made it. She said, yo, I love that sandbox video. That was great. Appreciate it. Uh, in that sandbox video, I proved it. So that's what she's talking about. Like, I created a freaking brand new domain. Brand new. And then, like, the next day, I was recording a video for y'all, showing y'all first page and second page rankings. Where the sandbox at? Okay. Um <clears throat> Shizzy said, using Weebly to start first is better than link to your site leverage. Yes, Lord. Um, <laughs> Gargantuan. Yeah. Oh, my brother on here. De uh, when you see Devo uh, um, SR in the chat, that's that's my brother right there from St. Louis. Uh, I grew up with him. All right. So it says, uh, should we duplicate our website to different languages and keywords meaning the same thing in different languages? Uh, counts as different keywords. No, you don't want to just go, you don't want to take your article and put it in Google Translate. Don't do that. That's dangerous. It's not going to mean the same thing. Like it's going to be, it's not going to make sense. And Google is going to be like, yo, what the heck is this gibberish? Okay. So you want to, when you create your site pages in a completely different language, you want to 
begin that site or those pages as if you speak in that language. Don't take one of your articles that's already ranking like a lot of people would suggest you do and then go and spin it in a different language and think it's going to have the same impact. Nah, no. You want to actually have that written from scratch using the AI. You ain't got to do it. Like give the AI the topic, give the, put the proper prompts in chat GPT, put the proper prompts in there and everything, but just tell GPT, this is the keyword. Okay, so you're going to do keyword research in the language of your choice. You're like, what? Yes, you, you're going to do keyword research in the language of your choice. Chat GPT understands. And then you're just going to plug those keywords into GPT. You're going to tell GPT, yo, create the article in Spanish using these keywords and you're going to use each keyword as a as an h2 is going to be each keyword is going to like be, start a new paragraph and all of that then you're going to turn all of these keywords and questions and stuff into an faq section and then we're going to turn that faq section into an infographic and then we're going to turn the leaders or the authorities of that topic or whatever, or different whatever businesses in that topic. We're gonna we're gonna create a pricing table or or, or a comparison table and a pie chart and a bar graph, right? Yep. Uh, Susie says, <laughs> search video search SEO spitting game. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> okay. All right. So let's come back over here. Uh, okay. So number one, it says use. Chat GPT to efficiently create content for your pages, okay? Because GPT can generate unique, high-quality content tailored to your specific keywords and topics. Yes, it can. As you guys have seen, like we're past the age of thinking that AI content can't rank. Please tell me in the chat that you guys understand by now that AI content, if done correctly, can rank. Google does not hate AI content. Google hates trash content. I say that all the time because it's true. They just don't like trash content, even if a human is writing it. All right. So don't produce trash. All right. So create high quality content. And that just goes based off of the instructions and the prompts that you give GPT. If you're just going on there plainly like everybody else, Create me an SEO optimized article about why fish don't go to sleep. Boo! You need to give it multiple keywords. You need to give it multiple questions to answer. You need to tell it to write in a specific tone and manner. You need to tell it to give you uh, examples and reference popular uh, 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 authority figures and celebrities and and. and public figures and movies and shows and all that, pull everything you can out of GPT. And that's when you're going to get the best pieces of content that Google would be stupid to penalize. Yeah, I called you out, Google. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So next, we're going to implement AI tools for programmatic SEO page cloning. So when I say AI tools, I don't mean we go and buy a whole bunch of tools and stuff. Some of y'all like to use um, WordPress and WordPress has some tool that people created or something. It's called auto blogging or auto blogger or something. And it'll clone out your pages and stuff like that. Me, I like Weebly because I don't have to connect no freaking outside tool to just go in there and press clone page, clone page. I can clone the pages out a million damn times without using. So when I say AI tool, I consider that clone button a AI tool because I don't have to rewrite the freaking uh, website pages. But I'm not telling you go and spend a lot of money going to get some damn tools. That's not what I'm telling you. Okay. Once those of you who do get in the money highways, ranking bank course on June 17th, get in there. I'm is not so okay. So y'all's real or David, how much more money am I gonna have to spend to get results? A lot of this stuff that we're doing, you don't have to spend no damn money. You don't have to spend. When people look, okay, let's move on. All right, implement AI tools for programmatic SEO page cloning. This step allows for the rapid generation of SEO optimized pages, greatly improving your site's coverage of your chosen niche. So let me give you guys some examples. Let's see, best restaurants, we'll do St. Louis. Best 
Restaurants, St. Louis. One time for the folks from the STLMO314. Yes, Lord. Okay, so as, as you'll see, we have the best restaurants in St. Louis from TripAdvice. Now, we're going to take the same keyword. We're going to go to Kansas City, KCMO. Oh, snap. Oh, Google doesn't like programmatic SEO and duplicate content. Oh, yeah. Look at the title. It's exactly the same, man. The best restaurants, the best, the 10 best restaurants in Kansas City. We're going to go to Kansas City. We're going to click, open it up. We're going to open it up one time for the folk. Then we're going to come back over here to St. Louis. This is ranking in both cities. Number two. Let's click it up. Over here, the 10 best restaurants in St. Louis, just like it. So this is my point, y'all. I say rapid hastily. I'm talking about rapid growth. Why you want to strategically choose your keywords that you know you'll be able to rank for, and then you want to use the same formula on every page in different locations that have similar uh, levels of competition and traffic so that you don't have to start every time you go into a different area or create a new page. A lot of people create, the reason why it takes you forever to create content for your websites is because you are creating articles from scratch every time you create a page. But if the page is on the same topic, but it's just a different location, why are you changing the content? All, only thing that needs to be changed is the stuff pertaining to locations. It's still talking about the best restaurants. So if your content is talking about the best restaurants, why do you need to change? It's not like you're lying in St. Louis, but you're going to tell the truth in Kansas City. The best restaurant is the best restaurant no matter where you are. So all you have to do once you clone out all of these pages is go have a VA or yourself or somebody go back in and change the information about the location, whether you're linking out to a local chamber of commerce, a Wikipedia about that city, uh, uh, you know, the specific restaurants themselves. That stuff is the stuff that would change. But all the information about how to choose the best, that's why you want to strategically choose the keywords that will apply in all locations. How do you decide what a best restaurant is? Or how the history of uh, commercial restaurants in St. Louis. These are, I mean, not in St. Louis, uh, uh, in the United States or period. The history, like these strategic keywords will apply no matter what the location is. So you can keep all of that the same, but then just come in there and change the restaurant images out. And then boom, now it applies to Kansas City. So these are St. Louis restaurants, and then these are Kansas City restaurants. So it's very similar. All right, so if you, you uh, look at this. Let me show you the programmatic SEO. So just get ahead, so it is really crazy out in this piece. Uh, over here in Panama, right? And like I said, I'm already high up in the freaking mountains in this hella jungle trees type situations too. Uh, so if the internet goes out by some chance or the lights go out or something like that, it ain't me hanging up on y'all, all right? Don't take it personal, personal. All right, that was the moniker for back in the day. All right, but anyway, so as you can see, I want y'all to pay attention to the similarities of the structuring of the pages. If it works in one area, if you got the similar keyword competition and traffic and all of that type of stuff, it should work the same somewhere else. So we start off with restaurants in St. Louis. Watch this. We start off with restaurants in Kansas City. Now we show down. We got an ad for monetization right there. Let me hold on, let me move this out of the way. All right. So this is what you want to be doing on your pages. Anybody watching right now, if you have a site, this is... This is like the cheat codes. This is like the rapid like results type stuff. Programmatic SEO and ethical dupl duplicate content. All right, so check this out. Next, it has browse Kansas City by food. Let's see if it has something similar. Oh, snap. Browse St. Louis by food. Then we got community picks in St. Louis. So next, they got fine dining over here. Let's see what is next. Okay, fine dining right here. So they got community picks in St. Louis, but that's not in uh, Kansas City. But they got fine dining next. Let's see. Then they got just like over here. Okay, so then over here, they have local cuisine and moderately. 
They got local cuisine, and they got moderately. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? So these headlines and stuff, they know that they work in every city. So they literally just clone out the pages. Now, it's easy for them because all the content is user generated. At least after they get it up and running at the beginning, you'll create the first pages and stuff so you can start getting rankings and you can start getting the clients to actually want to uh, uh, list on your directory and everything. But after a while, all they're doing is cloning out these pages. Then the pages are organically ranking on their own and these local businesses are finding them and creating the listings and, and ranking the pages themselves. But everything else is duplicate content and freaking uh, look, pages are identical. Only thing that changes is the, the store restaurants themselves. Even the ad is the same. I mean, come on. And they're ranking number two in both cities. So come on, challenge me. Challenge me, man. Tell me I'm wrong on this mug. All right? That's not pride speaking. That's my being grateful to be unchained from the matrix that these desperate mediocre seo channels try to put on us i was locked under a whole bunch of mental imprisonment from a lot of these different marketing channels and stuff too or they'll tell you you have to or you need to or or you're not going to be able to rank if you don't do buy uh, uh uh build all of these things that they created as barriers and roadblocks for me i'm trying to help you guys tear down the strongholds like the Bible tells me to. All right, so give me one second, y'all. I got to, like, the uh, it's getting dark outside and since I got these lights on and I got these, like, floor-to-ceiling, gigantic office-looking dang on windows. They look cool, but they are a damn problem at nighttime. So all the, all the bugs and stuff start getting attracted to the window and it look like I'm freaking going to get attracted by... Uh, uh, I'm about to get attacked by uh, a plague or something, you know, the locusts or something. Give me one second to close out everything. Give me one second, y'all. I'll be right back after the evening messages. All right. I am back like invertebrates or vertebrates, whichever one. I'm back. I'm back like the other side of the. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, do, do y'all understand? You have an understanding of what programmatic SEO is and how you can use it for your websites. So you'll find the keywords or the topics that relate to every freaking city or every location that you plan on churning out for your page or every keyword that is similar when you're creating topically a uh, topical authority, which is silos. And that content can remain the same. So, so basically what I'm talking about, where to say best restaurants or where to say fine dining or dinner or cheap ease, uh, cheap eats or local cuisine. These are all topics. Uh, uh, TripAdvisor understands that these are topics that are the same across all 50 states and probably countries. So why would they go and recreate the freaking site or will every time they go to a new city, especially when they're trying to grow at scale? So that's proof that Google does not mind programmatic SEO or duplicate content right there because all of this stuff is pretty much the same on all of the pages. Only difference is going to see location specific stuff on the different pages. That's the only difference. So now come back over here. We're going to develop ethical duplicate content. And that's what I was talking about. So the paragraphs and all of that stuff that's on the topic that is going to be relevant across the entire website you see it a lot on Wikipedia. Like a lot of the pages have the same stuff, but then they'll just put the little specific stuff that you asked about at the top. That's what will make that page unique. Google just needs to know what you want to rank for. Only time you'll get a duplicate content issue is if the, the pages are too similar and Google does not know which one to rank for a specific keyword. So if you're, uh, if you create a, I'll give you a good example of where this would not do well at. Some of you will create a page for best tacos in Los Angeles. And then you'll create another page just because you want to rank for, <laughs> for the other variation of the keyword. And it will, the, the, the other page will be 
Los Angeles Best Tacos. It means the same thing. Best Tacos, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Best Tacos. But you created two separate pages for that. Google don't know which one to rank for that. So chances are they're not going to rank either one. But <clears throat> if you break down Los Angeles into municipalities and counties and all of that stuff, then yeah, you're good. We go out to Sherman Oaks, Thousand Oaks, uh, uh, Semi Valley, and, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff like that, right? You're good then. But LA and Los Angeles, Google ain't stupid. They know what LA and Los, they know it's the same thing. So that's when duplicate content becomes a problem when people try to do over cannibalization with their SEO and keywords. So it says develop ethical duplicate content while original content is preferred in SEO. Duplicate content ethically can be a benefit, can be beneficial in certain situations. This can involve rewording or repurposing existing content, ensuring it provides unique value and avoids any penalties from search engines. So that's why I tell you guys, when you clone out another page, even though you're going to have a lot of the same content from the last page, make sure uh, at least 100 to 300 words is unique to that specific location or area. Have a section at the bottom that says uh, cities, other cities near St. Louis. And then on the Kansas City page at the bottom, it has other cities near uh, Kansas City. So now it makes those pages completely different. And then you have a section at the bottom that says, while you're in Kansas City, these are the top places to visit. Then on that page, it says, while in St. Louis, these are the top places to visit. And then the rest of the content can be exactly the freaking same. But Google, now Google knows this is a St. Louis page because those landmarks and those uh, uh, places to visit and stuff, you're linking out to those places and that's local. They're sending local signals to Google. And then the Kansas City page is doing the same thing. You understand? Ranking out to the, linking out to the Kansas City specific stuff. Google ain't stupid. It just wants you to give the people what they're asking for when they come to Google search. All right. So now <clears throat> this is when it becomes uh, pretty much what it was on the other perfect SEO game plan. But a lot of you guys weren't around for that anyway. So it says choose a profitable niche that will allow for the creation of numerous topic pages. For example, in the Money Highways uh, Ranking Bank SEO course, I am going to be demonstrating fast rankings with an airport-related website. It's a parasite, so it's going to rank fairly quick for a lot of the keywords. I'm confident, not cocky. And I'm not cocky, I'm confident. So when you tell me I'm the best, it's a compliment. <laughs> okay, but anyway... Uh, choose a profitable niche that will allow for the creation of numerous topic pages. So me choosing the airport is so many topics about the airport. And then in those topics, I can create so many silos and programmatic pages for the airport. So choose a topic that can be broken down into a whole crap load of sub niches. This will allow you to get millions of searches to your site per month or at least per year, right? And that's money, baby. <laughs> All right. So even if you are like, like, check this out. Even if you are a local business, this will work for you. Check this out. A lot of SEOs ain't going to tell you guys this if you are a local business. So you're sitting here trying to generate leads for your, your car detailing business in Omaha, Nebraska, or for your limo service in St. Louis, or for your, uh, your barbecue hut in, in Kansas City. You're trying to get people to come visit your restaurant or your your location and all of this stuff, right? But check this out. There's other types of pages you can put on there besides your local pages. Information pages. So if you're you're that, let's say you're that barbecue hut restaurant, you have your pages for your location and you're trying to rank for barbecue restaurants in, in whatever city it is, Kansas City, right? But you're a barbecue place. Look, it's so many topics inside you. Barbecue is a topic in itself. You can rank informational search terms on your site, different barbecue uh, recipes. You can have your SEO rank you for a lot of those terms. And that's a whole nother income stream for your restaurant. Yeah, th those are national terms. So those people might not come into your location, but you'll be able to sell affiliate products on those informational pages. You'll be able to put ads on those informational pages. You understand what I'm saying? Like 
put your book on, on there or whatever it is, become this real authority. So that's barbecue. Then you got restaurant, period. That's a whole nother topic. What about ranking for how to start a restaurant, how to build a barbecue restaurant? All of these different issues, uh, ranking for issues that people have when they're starting a restaurant. What qualifies a person to open a restaurant? Uh, how many years of school do I need? Do I need certification for that? All of that stuff. Numerous topic pages. Pick the right niches, y'all. Don't be so quick to run out there. You want to think fast, but you want to act in a calculated manner. Think fast, but act in a calculated manner. The scripture says, no wise man should take action without first seeking wise counsel. So yes, we want to act. We want to act, but we want to seek wise counsel first. And this is why I spend so much money on courses and mentors and all of that stuff, because I ain't trying to sit here and go through all the damn trial and error on my own. Seek wise counsel. So check this out. Conduct a com competition analysis for easy rankings, looking for signs such as more than two or three directory websites, which ind indicates the first page of Google is weak. I always tell y'all that. That's why I'm always pointing out uh, TripAdvisor, multiple Yelps, uh, freaking, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the Facebooks and all of that stuff ranking on the first page of Google. That stuff helps you indicate whether or not the first page of Google is weak. Yes, the one we are going to make some real money, broski. Okay. Um, man, so y'all having fun so far, man. Y'all having fun so far. Okay, so my brother, the uh, Devo, if he's still on here, he he's a dollar ha ha ha. Yes, Lord. But anyway, <laughs> he has a delivery business in St. Louis that I'm uh when I, I gotta get back to helping him with that site and stuff. There's a lot of projects. His project is his site is gonna be one of the projects inside the money highways uh ranking bank course as well. So you'll get to witness the evolution of Devo. <laughs> Tell him I say what's up in the chat real quick. You'll get to witness, you understand, the growth. All right. Like he just birthed this delivery company. But you're going to see how we use the power of SEO and these money highways I'm talking about to fully monetize a delivery like far greater than just some other delivery company in the local city. Like it's not just going to be ranking for flower delivery and then we leave it at that. No. OK. All right. So check this out. Select a city with high call volume, but low population. So I always tell you guys to go to, um, I always tell you guys to search U.S. cities by population on Google. And then uh, when you search U.S. cities by population on Google, let's go ahead and do that now so that you can see what I'm talking about. U.S. cities by population. Okay, so I'll always like to go with the Wikipedia. And then when you scroll down, You'll see all of these cities by population listed. Okay. So it says over here, choose cities with a population between 30,000 and 100,000 people. This is just a gauge uh, to begin with. Why? Because when you're doing local SEO, you're going to have a lot of competition most of the time. And we're trying to fly under the radar of a lot of these SEOs that have may have bigger budgets than us. All right. Maybe they've been doing SEO for so long and they're, they're way more talented than you and maybe even me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. All right. But anyway, uh, if I ever wasn't the greatest, greatest, maybe I must have missed it. No. All right. So check this out. So we'll choose cities with the population in the hundred thousands all the way down to the thirty thousands. Why? Because that will give us just enough search value. That'll give us enough search volume locally. You understand what I'm saying? For even like St. Louis, there are municipalities and tinier towns inside St. Louis and everything with high search volume, but low competition. So instead of just going after St. Louis, for example, I would go after Bell Fountain, Missouri. That's in North County, St. Louis, Bridgeton, Missouri. Uh, 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 um, freaking... Uh, Oh, I ain't been in St. Louis so many years. I'm starting to forget the freaking dang on cities. Uh, ba ba Baden, Baden, that's a bad area. Freaking, uh, uh, you understand? West County, Chesterfield, Wildwood, all of those. You understand what I'm saying? Afton, Missouri, right? Tessine Ferry and all of that. Like, dude, we, we would 
go after those and stuff because those are going to be faster rankings and they still get enough search volume where we can get some sales, we can get some money, we can get some work. Okay, so look, a hundred to thirty thousand. You understand? And you you just you know you just go through these months. You understand? Okay, so that will help you. Then you would utilize tools like AnswerThePublic.com. I'm just when doing keyword research for topic uh, uh, page topics to find extra keywords and topic pages. So let me show you guys that. So we'll say answer the public. We've never been here before. This is pretty much just another site slash tool that we use uh, to find more search queries um, since Google has limited space on the first page of Google to give us all of the related searches. But don't get it twisted. They use API from Google and, and all of that extra stuff to be able to find out these queries. So we'll put in here delivery uh, service. I mean, we'll just put that in there just as an example. So I can show y'all how, let's say you are creating, uh, you want to create a massive, uh, um, you know, authoritative site on this topic right here. Okay. Ooh, they updated. They upgraded and updated. It looked different. Look at all of this. Cost per click. So this keyword, according to them, like we don't want to believe this stuff, but it said we know it got some search value. We'll just say that. Look at this. Anyway, but this is the part that we do want to pay attention to. These are all related queries and searches that people search and stuff like that, that you can create pages for on your site and answer. Even if it's not a local search term, like I said, there's other ways you can monetize with those informational pages. And just, it will help you rank locally if you're still the authority on delivery service, period. Not just the authority in St. Louis or Kansas City or wherever you are locally with your delivery service. You wanna be the authority on delivery service, period. So a lot of those informational pages, if you create a gazillion informational pages and you're like, yo, this dude just, this, this dude is the Wikipedia of delivery. Now, when you go to rank in your city, like Google is like, here, let me toss them that, man. Let me toss, let me toss that out there. Like, let me just go ahead and get them that. That, that ain't too hard for me. You understand? All right. So that's answer to the public. Also, always create Google, uh, create pages surrounding subtopic pages from the people also ask section on Google's first page. So we already talked about that. Then we want to use the, using the data collected from steps seven and eight, design the page starting with a list. So why do I say that? When we created this um, perfect SEO game plan, when it was first constructed, this is when we were doing a lot of SEO, uh, local SEO and trying to rank on the first page of Google for local search terms. So we'll just go to delivery service, blah, blah, blah. So first of all, I want you to notice something. What is ranking over even above? We, we This is starting to like really push stuff down. The feature snippet that I was talking to you guys about earlier is ranking over the snack pack now. It ain't even an ad, but it's a feature snippet. But I want you to see that the feature snippet is in a listing format, just like I said right here. Design the page starting with a list. Now, right up under that, why? Why, y'all? Like, is it just because we want things to be pretty or something like that? No, it's because of organization. You want your pages easy to, easy to digest, not just for Google's bots to crawl the site and index, but also easy to digest for users that visit your website. You want their, them to be able to ask the question and then go to your site and get the answer and be satisfied. So listings organize websites. When you create something in a listing format, it organizes all of that content instead of having a, all of these bunchy, uh, bunched up uh, paragraphs and stuff like that. This is why you see a lot of directories ranking on the first page of Google because they're just automatically created in this listing type format. So I have this, this rule of imitation, especially in my local pages. I try to imitate the first page of Google as much as I can. 
So y'all be going to the websites of your competitors and be trying to imitate their on-page SEO. That's cool, and I do it sometimes too. But I'm going to imitate the one who has the power of ranking and selecting who looks the best. I mean, Google themselves. So check this out. They got listings. And then even right here, like we have the the heading or the header or the, uh, the H2 or whatever you would call it. Then a little bit of description, H2. Then a little bit of description, H2. Then a little bit of description. Then I got the FAQ or the related searches. And usually it's the FAQ on here or some images uh, ranking for it or whatever. So that's how I design my pages. Don't believe me? Let's go and look at one of my keywords. <clears throat> uh, I think we're still doing a Google dance, y'all. <clears throat> This is a site, a plastic surgery site that I just uh, started creating and stuff like that. And I'm trying to show y'all how even, all right, we are still indexed. We didn't get the indexed. Okay. So even on this page right here, and even the different language, I'll add it for what Google. So, let's, so I mean, everything is running slow. I just got a notification that my internet is unstable, guys. But can y'all see my screen still? Do y'all see what what your dude did right here? You see how Google has the Google My Business listings with the map, uh, with the uh, uh, the maps and stuff right there on the first page of Google. I went and did the exact same thing. Okay, then I created everything in a listing format. So we got the H two or the topic header. And then we got a little bit of content, topic header, then a little bit of content, topic header, then a little bit of content. Then we got the FAQ section, just like Google. Then we got things in the listing format with the bullets, uh, creating some snipping bait. Then we have, uh, um, what is this, a, a bar graph right here. Hopefully we can get the feature snippet with that. All right, so I'm making this content digestible for Google, easily digestible for Google, and uh, easily easy to navigate for actual like regular website visitor. We got some M uh, videos on there expressing what this keyword is talking as well. All right, then we're going to come all the way down to the bottom. Look at this. We got countries with the highest demand in plastic surgery. So when I say programmatic SEO, y'all, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to go to a different page. You're going to notice how all of the pages are structured exactly the same. So down here is talking about all the countries that uh, uh, and then I link out to the Wikipedia's for each of the countries. Right. Sending those good signals to Google authorities. Right now, let's find another page. Are all of the pages hidden or wait, 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 wait. OK, so then we got Houston. As you can see, the H1 is the same. All of that's is oh, snap programmatic at the home page. Oh, that only difference is all I had was come in and change out this Houston, these Houston Google Maps and out the, to drive induction to some actual plastic surgeons in Google, giving those signals to Google. But all the rest of this content, I structured it to where it's just talking about plastic surgery, the topic. So why would I have to change that? It, it applies in every city if I'm talking about plastic surgery. The FAQ, it, it applies in every city. All of this applies in every city. Got the same bar graph, got all of that, right? Then, okay, so this is what I came down here and changed. As you can see, it wouldn't be difficult to have somebody just come in here and just change the maps and then change this part, okay? So these are cities near Houston uh, with a high demand in plastic surgery. Boom, and then you just clone out the page again, and then you go to the next one. Indiana. So let's go to Google. All right. So, so are y'all learning, man? Let me know in the chat. Like, give me a little bit of encouragement. Man. Like, dude. Okay. Let's see. Indiana. Like, we're doing a Google dance right now. That Now, that is that is real. The Google dance is definitely real. Where it, uh, Google tests you out on certain pages, give you certain amounts of traffic to see, you know, how people respond to your, uh, to your site and stuff like that. You understand? But we are still ranking on the first page of Google. Usually is up here somewhere. And don't forget, guys, I'm all the way out the country. So if you search for uh, the best plastic surgeons in Indiana, that's what that means. 
if you search for that and you're in Indiana or somewhere close, maybe like Chicago or something, I might be ranking up a little bit more, you know, high. And let me show you the content on there. Maybe it's something different. It's something, yo, the Bible says to prove all things. I show y'all rankings. I show y'all all of that stuff. Like, okay, so as y'all see, it's, it's structured exactly the same. Oh, snap. I mean, look, it ain't changed nothing. Ain't nothing changed but the change. I'm going to stay the same. You understand what I'm saying? All this is, we got some stuff linking out to Indiana plastic surgeons, some driving directions, letting Google know that this is a different page, even though it got all of this duplicate content. Oh, I thought duplicate. I thought we couldn't rank no duplicate content. Shizzy say, we got this. You're a dream. Uh, Jim, I appreciate that, Shizzy, man. Appreciate it. Make sure y'all have signed up to the waiting list. Make sure y'all have signed up. <laughs> man, we, it's going to be some lunacy up in there. The people in there are going to make some freaking money with SEO, okay? Uh, uh, but yeah, like, as y'all can see, this is all duplicate content. So when they're telling you you can't rank no duplicate content or programmatic SEO is going to get penalized and all of that, first of all, I just showed y'all TripAdvisor, dog walking, all of them other websites on the first page of Google using programmatic SEO. Zillow does the same thing. Uh, Redfin, uh, Uber, uh, Airbnb, DoorDash, OpenTable, all of them use programmatic SEO and duplicate content. But all of a sudden, because you go on YouTube and some bummy SEO tell you, oh, programmatic SEO and duplicate content is inethical. Google is going to de-index you and stuff. Well, I'm showing y'all me ranking on the first page of Google. That month, these, these keywords I've been showing y'all, like if y'all watched the first one where I revealed it, you saw that I had like four or five different cities ranking on the first page of Google in less than 24 hours. And they all use a duplicate content and programmatic SEO. All of them. Every last one. I'm not creating a different article for every page. So when you see me pop up with 500 or 400 pages, they're not all, <laughs> they're not all unique and different and stuff. I'll have something unique and different like the location specific stuff that require me. So South Bend, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Indianapolis, that type of stuff is, that's the stuff that needs to be specific to Indiana location. But the rest of this is topically relevant, okay? The rest of it, you want your site to be location, hyper-locally relevant and hyper-topically relevant. Write that down. Hyper-locally relevant and hyper-topically relevant. How can you convince Google that you're the authority on that topic, which is, in this case is plastic surgery, and how can you convince Google that you're a hyperly locally relevant in that city, which is why we added the Wikipedia links to all of these local area, uh, these surrounding cities and municipalities of uh, Indiana, which is why we're linking out to the Indiana Wikipedia, the Indiana Chamber of Commerce and other things, different landmarks, which is why we got the Google map embedded here, embedded into the pages right here. OK, now, just in case you guys want to know, I haven't even created the silo pages for this. Imagine what's going to happen when I create the silo pages. All of these are just cloned out programmatic SEO pages. But now I got to go in or have someone else, someone or something go in and create the silo pages for the city specifically. That's going to increase the authority and the relevancy of the Indiana part itself. So the questions that are sp uh, specific to Indiana and all of that on this topic, those pages are going to get created and linked to this page. And that's going to help me boost up my freaking rankings. And guess what? No backlinks, no external backlinks from any other dang on website company or, or SEO link selling service. I mean, so look, we're turned down all the strong, man. We're, we're turned down all the strongholds, ain't we? You understand? So we ranking on the first page of Google for Indiana. Like some of the other pages are still in the dang on Google bounce. Let's see what Baltimore talking about. Maybe we came out of that bounce real quick for that. We're looking for the bounce like Jay-Z. You hear me? Uh, okay. So we ain't there yet in Baltimore. I don't know where that one is. But I know we ain't in no sandbox. If it tell you you indexed, then you're indexed, y'all. Just let it play the little bounce game. 
then it's going to simmer. As you can see, I've been showing y'all first page rankings for all of my dang on sites for the past like month or so, like new brand new sites. And this is just the stuff I'm showing publicly. Wait until the course releases. We got all these other assets and entities. We're going to be using as projects inside their life that you can literally just copy into your own niches and get instant, instant rankings for some of you. First week, uh, first week rankings for all of you. Okay. We, we, we just got so much. Been doing this since 2015, baby. All right. So <sighs> never had an SEO course like this. It's just different. I'm not going to sit here and compare myself. Oh, we're the best. I just say it's different. It's different. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be one that we really going to like, like, like ramp up for real, for real. Like this one is exciting. The plastic surgery one. But anyway, then we got this other one in there. OK, but anyway. All right. So start with a list, then create the data table from the people also ask questions and link them to pages named and created from those questions. So this is where that good silo effect comes into it. And you start really looking like an authority in that area. OK, then perfectly silo your website with all topic pages and suburbs linking back to the main city or a, a main topic page for link juice sharing. So that's what we were talking about. Now, name all topic and city pages, the keywords that you wish to rank for. So this will work best on your Parasite websites. All right, on, par on Parasite websites, you can get away with a lot of the keyword stuff and stuff that you won't be able to get away with when you're on your money sites. That's why I tell you guys to start off with Parasites first. And if you still don't get what a parasite is, it's just any other um, high domain authority, usually like a directory, a social platform or something. Any site that's not yours is already freaking ranking with high authority and stuff. And you're using it to siphon credibility, authority and sales uh, back to your entity. OK, that's a parasite, like a real parasite. You're feeding off of it. Now, balance the use of your keyword throughout the content. You can keyword stuff and bold the print, uh, bold print the headlines, but use the keyword only once or twice per paragraph. Prioritize branding keywords over money keywords. So, for example, my brand keyword would be anti job or anti job university, anti job affiliate army, blah, 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 that type of stuff. So, I can use that way more than I would be able to use um, uh, best, best alternative uh, college to full sale university. I would only be able to use that a certain amount of times in my content without it being over cannibalization. But I can use my own brand anti-job uh, as much as I freaking want to. And that helps too, especially if I got a lot of pages on the site, y'all. Linking out to your contact page and your about me page from every page and and different location pages, and you can use the anti-job uh, anchor text and, and all that. Like, yo, that stuff helps. Prioritize branding keywords over money keywords, even if it's a competitor, okay? So it would be anti-job university versus full sale university. I would create a page for my competitor on my site, and it would be anchor text in that one uh, anti-job university article linking to the page for Full Sail University review. Don't worry, y'all will get it, man. I promise. Okay, ensure every page has at least 2,000 words of unique content. If new content is needed, reword existing posts. Like I said, if it's on your site, don't go and get somebody else's content from somebody else's site and try to spin it in some article spinner and then paste it onto your site. Your content is unique to you because it's yours, but you can repurpose your own content. So as I show you guys before, we were talking about making your content hyper local by linking out the popular landmarks, zip codes, neighborhoods, and area codes, embed no less than 12 highly keyword and location optimized photos on your site, that were uploaded to Photo Bucket and Backlink Blasted. This is when we get real deep. This is some of the off-page stuff right there, but we'll get into all of that later, guys. Uh, but what do y'all think so far, man? What y'all think so far? Ah, snap. <laughs> I haven't even finished the page, y'all. Okay, so what you want to do is here. I 
have the page finished by tomorrow morning. Make sure you set your alarm for 5 p.m. tomorrow because we will be going live again, beginning a countdown to the Money Highways Ranking Bank. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pin. I'm going to pin the uh, perfect AI SEO game plan into our new Money Highways Fast SEO Money Methods group right here. So you'll be able to download it in here and you'll be able to go to the waiting list in here. So I'm going to put that in there. So for now, what you need to do or what you should do, I don't want to say need to do, what I would recommend, highly suggest you do is set your timer, set an alarm for 5 p.m. tomorrow. We're going to be going deeper into those of you who have put your niche, you put your niche and your site inside here. You put your niches and your sites inside here. I'm going to take uh, those of you who have did that, like I instructed earlier, and we're going to go and use each of you as examples and help you get traffic and sales to your actual sites and brands. We're going to do all of that live. That's what's going to consist of the countdown all the way to June 17th. All right. So go get into this group. It's a free group. Let me put this group link into the, uh, the chat real quick the free Facebook group for the money highways. Okay. And then they make you here. I'll just put the link in the chat. You can open that up in another browser. Join the group is free. You'll get instant access. So I'm going to pin. Also, you'll be able to go in there and download all of the other gifts I've given you guys for free inside that group that will help you with your SEO and monetizing your assets. The 15, uh, where are we at? Where it is it? Uh, where's that file at for the 15, um, the 15 unique ways of monetizing. Here it is. Fifteen ways to monetize a website. Like, dude, get in there, download that, study that, because we're going to go deep and deep with that. Okay, we're going to go in deep with that. This is how a lot of y'all think y'all got to buy a million or buy a million or build a million assets so you can have multiple income streams. But I'm going to show you how to turn one asset into 15 or more different income streams. Trust me, you're going to want to be around for this stuff. Okay, so set your alarm for 5 p.m. tomorrow, so 5 p.m. Central. Okay, unless y'all have some type of new daylight savings time crap over there in America. I don't know. Y'all be playing around or the government be playing around over there. And ain't no such thing as daylight savings time. So time be changing for y'all, but it stay the same for us out here. So y'all be like, David, you an hour early. No, I'm not. Y'all are an hour late <laughs> or an hour early or whatever it is. I promise the time don't change for us. Um, that's not a godly thing. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, check this out. Be here at 5 p.m. Central tomorrow. Okay, set your alarm. Pay attention to the posts in the community tab so that you can get updates and all of that type of stuff. Pay attention to the rules in the build, uh, building monetize uh, assets over there in that chat GPT group. I post in there too still. Uh, and pay attention to if you see something come through your news feed from in here. So go and join here and then you'll get a notification when the waiting list uh, page is complete. And you'll be able to go and join the waiting list and you'll uh, whitelist those in, uh, emails and make sure that they don't be going to the spam folder or none like that so that you can get the email sequences and the updates and stuff. Because I know y'all got a lot of stuff that y'all do during the day, just like me. Life happens on the other end of the computer. I know that, right? So you want to pay attention to these emails and stuff. So because it's out of sight, out of mind, then you will miss June or You'll miss these 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. free classes that we do that give you all of this stuff that you can go and do right now for free, right? So like I said, go in here and you'll be able to become a part of this group and you'll be able to download a lot of the free documents and gifts and files that I put in here that you guys can use for free without even going to get a course or something like that. But you'll also be updated when, when you can join the waiting list You'll also be updated when, when the course launches and all of that stuff. So it's extremely fun. This is one of my favorite times of the day when I get to come on here live and help y'all out without even charging y'all nothing. I don't feel obligated because y'all ain't pay me, right? I'm Y'all not my clients, so 
you ain't the boss of me. No, I'm just playing. I get to do this out, <laughs> out of the kindness of my heart and stuff. So it, it feels good. Uh, this is one of my favorite times of the day, right? Um, but anyway, seven o'clock. That was when I was supposed to start family time with no exceptions. So I have to ride out, y'all. Make sure y'all are here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central. All right. Make sure you go to this group. And when I post in here to join the waiting list for the money, uh, money highways ranking bank course, I would strongly suggest y'all get on that waiting list. If y'all think these live free sessions are awesome, guys, like, dude, being a part of a, a, a something that that is closer to me like a course or a mentorship or a boot camp where i have to spend way more personal time with you that's the stuff that can really change your life for real for real but take this stuff that we do on here and try it too all right 